In section 8.2, we're going to learn an extremely useful formula for integration that I like to call voodoo. Now, there's no black magic about it. It's simply a nickname for a technique called integration by parts. Note, for integrands that are products, quotients, or compositions of functions, a clever substitution may work to identify the overall pattern of the integrand for simple integration. This is what we've been practicing in chapter seven. However, sometimes this process fails. If it does, we have another option. We can try IBP, integration by parts. Here's the formula. The integral of u times dv equals u times v minus the integral of v du. And I like to call this part voodoo. That's just because, first of all, this may feel a little bit tricky, but second of all, it's just an easy way to remember the formula. So the integral of u times dv equals uv minus the integral of voodoo. This is going to be a whole new approach for integration. So let's examine the proof so that you can understand where this formula comes from and how it's going to work. This is actually stemming from the product rule for derivatives. So let's begin with two functions of x. Let u and v be two functions of x. Then the derivative with respect to the independent variable x of the product of these two functions is going to, of course, require the product rule. Now let's use simple prime notation. This would be the first function times the derivative of the second, which we'll denote as v prime, plus the derivative of the first function times the second. Now I'm going to isolate this term. It may not be clear why at this point, but it will be in a few steps. Let's isolate that term by subtracting u prime v from both sides. We have the derivative with respect to x of u times v minus u prime v equals u v prime. Then just for readability, I'm going to flip this equation around using the reflexive property. There's a property in math that allows me to do this. I'm just reversing the two sides of the equation. Now, I'm going to integrate both sides of this equation with respect to x. This is going to give me on the left side the integral of uv prime with respect to independent variable x equals the integral of the derivative with respect to x of uv minus u prime v with respect to x. Now you may be wondering where we're going with this particular proof. You may not at this point be able to anticipate the next step, but I do expect you to be able to understand the mechanics of each step. So let's backtrack just for a minute. We started out with the product of two functions of x, they're called u and v, and we applied the product rule. Then we isolated one of the terms in that product rule, and we're now integrating both sides with respect to x. So on their own, I hope that the individual steps may make sense, even though you may not anticipate where it's going. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to break up the integral over there on the right side into two integrals. We have the integral of the derivative with respect to x of uv with respect to x minus the integral of u prime v with respect to x. So we're simply integrating term by term. Now let's go from the prime notation to the Leibniz notation. So we can look at v prime as the derivative of v with respect to x. So v prime and dv over dx represent the same thing. Also notice on this next side, we have the integral of the derivative with respect to x with respect to x. Now we know that if we integrate a derivative, those are two inverse operations and we don't get anywhere. We would end up with the original integrand, which is uv. Applying Leibniz notation inside the second integral, u prime is du over dx times v dx. Now, Leibniz notation is great to use because it behaves in an algebraic manner. 
What I mean by that is you can treat these dx's as if they are algebraic structures and they cancel. So we arrive at the formula integral of u dv equals u v minus the integral of, and I'm going to switch the order of these factors here, v du. So here's the big idea of what we're doing. This particular integration formula called integration by parts is recognizing that the pattern of the integrand is related to the result of a product rule. So when we apply the formula for integration by parts, essentially we're in a form or in a way reversing the product rule. Now before you panic, let me tell you what it's going to feel like. When we apply integration by parts, essentially you want to think of it as making two substitutions, one for u and one for dv. We're going to let u equal a function with an easily recognizable derivative. So if you can find a function that you can easily find the derivative, that will be a good candidate for u. Then we're going to make another substitution for dv. dv will be a function with an easily recognizable antiderivative. So we want to choose u to be a function that we can differentiate, and we're going to choose dv to be a function that we can integrate. Now remember, this is an alternative approach to making a general u substitution. If we cannot integrate using the techniques that we've learned before, then integration by parts may be a technique that will work. Let me show you how it works. Example one, the integral of x times the natural log of x dx. The nature of the integrand here is simply that it's the product of two functions of x. We have x times natural log of x. Now there's no ordinary u substitution that I could make here that would allow me to convert the integral entirely in terms of u. u equals natural log of x would not work, u equals x would not work. So we're going to go for this alternative approach called integration by parts. Again, in integration by parts, you'll see me abbreviate it IBP, we're going to make two substitutions. We're going to choose u to be a function with an easily recognizable derivative. Now, both x and natural log of x are easy to differentiate, right? So at this point, they're pretty much equal candidates. But we also have to choose dv to be a function with an easily recognizable antiderivative. Well, we know how to integrate x. We would just apply the power rule to that. But as far as integrating natural log of x, we haven't done that yet. We've differentiated natural log of x, but at this point, we do not have a formula to integrate natural log of x. So because we cannot easily integrate natural log of x, we're going to let natural log of x be u. Okay, so. Stick with me here. u equals natural log of x. My very next step is going to be my ordinary next step on a u substitution. The left side is du. The right side is 1 over x dx. We're differentiating both sides there. Now notice I'm working down the page. When I'm working down the page, I'm going to be differentiating. When I work up the page, I'm going to be integrating, okay? If you follow that practice, it kind of helps you to keep those two processes separate. So I'm going to let dv equal x dx. Now this is totally new. We haven't ever done anything like this. So what we're doing, we're saying that natural log of x, we're going to rewrite that as u, and my leftovers, x dx, we're going to replace that with dv. Now, in order to do this, we're going to also need to find the function v. v is obtained by integrating both sides here with respect to x. The integral of x dx is 1 half x squared, or you could write it x squared over 2. And the plus c is not going to be necessary with integration by part. So to summarize at this point, I chose u to be a function with an easily recognizable derivative, and the leftovers we're calling dv. We integrated because there was an easily recognizable antiderivative. 
Now let's put it all together with the integration by parts formula. So the integration by parts is the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du, or the integral of voodoo, right? Now u is natural log of x. We've got that over here. And v is 1 half x squared. We obtained that over here. So I have u times v in terms of x. Now we're going to subtract the integral of v, which we know is 1 half x squared, times du. du lives over here. It's 1 over x dx. So at this point, what I want you to recognize is how we are assimilating these parts. We will practice how do you choose u, how do you choose dv with several examples to come. At this point, focus on how did we put everything in its place. We are following this formula for integration by parts, which yielded this particular problem. Now let's go back and simplify a little bit. We have the natural log of x minus 1 half, whoops, times 1 half x squared, which you know what, I'm going to write it like this, x squared natural log of x divided by 2. That'll be a little more readable. Now as far as our integral goes, we can factor out our constant coefficient 1 half. Then we have x squared times 1 over x, which is dx. Now do notice I still have an integral to evaluate, but notice it is much easier than the original integral that we began with. So one of your goals in integration by parts is to choose your substitutions in such a way that it yields a very simple integral to evaluate. And I'm definitely going to give you some strategies for doing just that. So let's work this integral. We have x squared natural log of x over 2. That term is finished. No integral was required on that one. Here we have constant coefficient negative 1 half. We're going to integrate x with the power rule, and now we're ready for our, an arbitrary constant of integration. So if we simplify here, we have x squared natural log of x divided by 2 minus x squared over 4 plus c. So we have successfully integrated that stubborn original integrand. You may be thinking, what in the world just happened? So to help you build confidence that this is the correct antiderivative, we're going to go ahead and check our answer with differentiation. So let's find the derivative with respect to x of, and I'm going to write this for a different perspective, 1 half x squared natural log of x minus 1 fourth x squared plus c. You can write it either way, but this one might be easier to think about the derivative. Now, I'm going to write that constant coefficient 1 half to the left here while we apply the product rule to just these two factors. So we have the first function x squared times the derivative of the second, which is 1 over x, plus the derivative of the first times the second. Then we have minus 1 fourth times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. Let's go ahead and simplify. In our bracketed element here, we have x squared over x. That just gives me x, and let's go ahead and distribute our 1 half. So distributing the 1 half to the second term, we end up with x natural log of x, and our last term here reduces to minus 1 half x. The first and the last term cancel, and notice the result here, x natural log of x, matches the original integrand. So that indicates that the integration by parts method works. Although this may take a while to actually fully realize what we're doing here, we're recognizing that the integrand is the result of a product rule, and we're reversing the product rule with integration by parts. So you'll definitely want to memorize the formula for integration by parts and understand that the strategy is that we're making two substitutions, one for u and one for dv. We choose u to be a function that's easy to differentiate, and we choose dv to be a function that's easy to integrate. Then we assimilate the parts using that new integration by parts formula. In the next couple of videos, I'm going to show you strategies for how do you choose u and how do you choose dv.